Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to give you guys a quick introduction to DaVinci Resolve 16.1 in roughly 15 minutes or so. If after watching this video you need more information, there's a lot more videos on my channel which go into a lot more depth about everything that you can use in Resolve in order to make videos, but this should give you a good quick overview of what it's about and what functions are available to you. So we're already starting on the leftmost page of DaVinci Resolve, which is the Media tab. On the Media tab is usually where you're going to be pulling in media resources, videos, images, audio clips from your computer in order to start composing your video. So in order for something to be usable in the project, you need it to be in the Media Pool, which is in this bottom section. And you can either drag in any files directly from your computer into Resolve, or you can locate them in the top left media storage box over here and pull them from the media storage into the media pool. Either way works equally well. So for instance, if I want to pull some files off of my desktop, I can go to the C drive and then go into my username, desktop folder. Any video files you come across will have a thumbnail showing for that video. You can see that if you hover over the thumbnail that you can see a preview of that video clip in the right hand section. You can also change the preview frame of the video by dragging the cursor on the video file in the media storage. So you can see how it updates on the right hand side. If you want to bring video files into the media pool, it's simply a drag and drop scenario. So you can left click and drag a box around all of the video clips you want to select. Note that when they're selected, it'll be indicated by orange. Another option would be to left click and hold shift down and then click other video files that you may want to select if you want to do it one at a time. So when you're ready, drag your media clips into the media pool and you may come across this message which will say the clips have a different frame rate than your current project settings. So you can have that change to match automatically if you're sure that the frame rate of these recorded clips is what you want your project to be in. So I'll just go ahead and hit change here. If you want to see the frame rate and the resolution of your project, you can always check that by going up to file menu and then do project settings and it will be in the master settings. So you can see here that the timeline resolution is 1920 pixels by 1080. And then down here you can see the timeline frame rate, which is currently set to 29.97 frames per second. Now you'll note that once we have video files in our media pool that we can no longer change the timeline frame rate. So in order to change this, you have to make sure that there's nothing in the media pool down here. Playback frame rate will refer to how many frames per second it will play back to you while you're editing it in the timeline, but not necessarily the actual export frame rate. We can go ahead and hit close on that now. And let's go over to the first editing tab, which is the Cut tab. So the Cut tab is new to DaVinci Resolve 16. So one of the defining features of the Cut page, as opposed to the old Edit page, is that you have three timelines when you are editing videos here. So if I take this video and I use a function such as Smart Insert to add the video clip to the timeline, you'll see that there is a timeline in this middle section down here, which will show the entire length of the current timeline from start to finish. And you have the bottom timeline down here, which is a lot more zoomed in. And one of the advantages of the timeline down here is that you can see thumbnail previews of about every half second of video. So it gets easier to find the part of your video that you're actually trying to edit and make cuts on. So you won't see it by default, but if you go down to your video clip in the bottom timeline and you go over to the edge, you get this little indicator for the trim tool. So if you wanna shave a few seconds off the end of your video without making cuts, then you can use this trim tool. And what you'll see in the top right timeline is the number of frames that you're shaving off of your video. You might notice that there is a space for previewing two video clips. Because there's only one clip in the timeline, the right preview is just the end of the video. But if I bring the second clip into the timeline like so, and now I click on the border between these two videos, you can press and hold and do trim functionality with both clips previewing at the same time. So it becomes really handy when you want to get let's say, shots to match up correctly, because you can see exactly how it's going to look on both shots on a frame-by-frame -frame basis. So of course, when you're happy with the position of the timeline edit, you can just let go of your mouse, and then that will confirm the change. Now, another super common edit that you will be making all the time editing videos would be to use the cut or the blade tool. You can see that they've added it over here as split clips in the timeline tools. 
So if you ever want to split a clip in the cut tab, you can just click on that and then that will split one clip into two, which allows you to edit them independently of each other. If you're wondering the keyboard shortcut for the same functionality, it's control B on the keyboard. So you can see just by typing those two buttons, you can make another cut. And now we'd be able to easily do something like cut out this entire middle section by hitting control X to do cut functionality or left clicking on it and doing delete, which is really similar. In the top left, you can also see transitions, titles, and effects, which will give you different categories of things to add to your video. So for instance, transitions, when you want your video to move smoothly from one clip to another, you can add in a transition. So for instance, I could add in a cross dissolve by dragging that from the transitions here and adding that onto the clip. Hitting space, which will preview that transition up here in the top right, other than just having a quick cut between the two clips, with no transition. Um, you can also add in titles here. So if you want to drag a title somewhere on your video clip, uh, recommended you add it on video track two or above. Whatever's on the top most layer is gonna show on top of other layers. So if you put it below your main video clip that's taking up the whole screen, you wouldn't see it. And then you can see here the title getting previewed up there. So Resolve gives you a good chunk of video effects that you can add onto any video clip. So for instance, if I wanted to do something kind of wild, I could drop on an invert color function onto, let's say this bottom video clip, and that should make it look very, very bizarre. Since you would be taking all of the color spots on the video clip and reversing their colors completely. And now that you've kind of seen a preview of these different things you can add onto the video, you'd probably be wondering, well, where's a good place to actually edit them? So over on the edit tab, which is also used for editing your video in the timeline, although there's only one timeline over here, you get a little bit more direct control over changing the settings of your video clips. And one of the main reasons for that is the inspector. So the inspector will be open in the top right hand corner by default and you're able to click on any of your clips, titles, video effects, or transitions in order to edit them. So that you know if you want to change the effect you got to click on a video clip that has the effect and you'll know that with this little fx symbol and there'll be a new tab called open effects. So that would be where you find the settings for video effect. You click on a title it's more obvious because uh, you'll have all of the editable settings over here as drop down menus able to change things like the text that goes into that title, the font size, the color of the fonts, that kind of jazz. And with video clips, you have properties that you can change, such as the zoom in level of that video clip, the rotation of the shot, if you want to crop out part of your video, and things of that nature. Of course, since the edit tab is basically like the cut tab, but more full functioned, it's a little bit more cluttered, but you have access to more tools. You can find all of those transitions, effects, and titles in the effects library up. You can see that we have it open and right now it's open in this bottom left hand corner. So the same categories, video transitions and audio transitions are there as categories. And then if you want titles, you click on titles and video effects would actually be open effects specifically. These two in the actual toolbox effects category are for the next page over, which is called fusion. And we'll briefly touch on that in a minute here. Okay, so really quickly, let's go over to the Fusion page of DaVinci Resolve. And I'm going to do that with this first clip selected so that we can make a modification to this clip. So we go over to the Fusion page, and what you'll see is a couple of nodes in the bottom left-hand section. So you can see for this video clip that we have Media In, and it's directly feeding into Media Out right now with this arrow, and that there's no changes actually being made to the video clip before it gets its final output in the Media Out node. But what you can do with nodes is to create video clips by adding stuff that will occur before your media in and media out. So just a really quick example here, you can see above the nodes that there is a toolbar here with a bunch of additional nodes that you can add to your video clip. So for instance, if I wanted to adjust the brightness or contrast of a clip or a video effect that I'm working on, I can take my media in, click the brightness contrast, which will create a node in front of that, and now this brightness contrast node is going to adjust whatever gets fed into it before it gets fed to a new output. So I can make my clip darker by lowering the brightness down. And now the information that's feeding out from the brightness node will be the base video clip, but with a lowered brightness. So I could add another node on top of that, such as blur. So I can make my clip very blurry over in the inspector by increasing the blur size. And now we have a darker clip that gets fed into a blur to make a blurry and dark clip all in one node composition. Now with these simple examples, a lot of the same effects could be achieved with those drag and drop effects and then just editing them directly in the inspector. 
But when nodes become really handy is when you need to create uh, complex systems of a bunch of nodes feeding into other nodes, separating into each other, and that sort of thing if you really want to get into it, but it's not required for basic video editing, of course. So next we have the color tab, which is kind of similar to the fusion tab in that you can apply additional effects here. Uh, but the main purpose of the color tab is to do color grading. So when you want your video to get a certain color look, this is where you can come in order to make those edits. So here you have access to a lot of tools for adjusting the color of your video, like the color wheels over here, and tools like curves over here, which allow you to do things like change the color on a color by color basis by raising and lowering uh, the color curves for the hue that you're trying to edit. So we can just kind of go up and down with the input output hues, and you can see that it will drive these curves similar to animation curves for the color hue values that you're working with. But you can do more than just adjust the hue. You can also have the saturation change with these curves based on what color hue you are currently dealing with. For instance, you could desaturate all of the reds by adding a couple points in here and bringing it way down for a red. On the next tab over, you can adjust the luminosity based on the hue. So if you wanted greens to be very bright, you can make sure that the greens are brighter than other colors. And you can see how this is a really useful tool for targeting certain areas of your video uh, based on the criteria you wanna edit it with. Now it looks terrible right now, so I'm going to reset all of these and we'll touch on a few more points here. So power windows are invisible shapes that will exist over your video and you can use them as masks or areas that you want to target with certain effects or to restrict from being affected by certain effects. So there are nodes in the color tab as well. And if you do something like create additional corrector nodes, which will take your media in as an input, you can have each of your corrector nodes receive a different power window as a mask. And then you can apply color effects to different areas of your video individually. So, so you can see I lowered all the color values, which is going to darken the clip, but only for the bottom corrector node, where the top corrector node still has its original brightness. And by merging those together, I can get this kind of effect where the center is bright, but the outer areas are not. Now, if you need quick color grading, there's something called lookup tables over here. So in the top left, it's called LUTs. And you can find LUTs online that you can download and use within DaVinci Resolve. And the idea of these LUTs is that you can apply a quick look to your video by having a lookup table adjust the output color of your video clips. And so to apply these lookup tables to your video clips, you simply need to have the video clip selected. And then if you have multiple corrector nodes, you need to select the right corrector node too. Uh, by default, you wouldn't need to do that and then double click on the lookup table you want to apply. So if I double click on this lookup table, you can see that this corrector node now has a lookup table symbol applied to it. And you can see that the colors in that center area are being changed based on the values that the lookup table has set. Now note that if you want another clip with only one corrector node and you double clicked one of them to add a lookup table, that that would apply to the whole video clip because the corrector node has no masking or filters. So let's move on to the Fairlight page of DaVinci Resolve, which is where you would do your serious audio editing. So in the bottom left, you can see only the audio timelines for your video clips. If you had any audio on your video and there was audio information in them, you'd be seeing audio waveforms, which will show when someone is speaking or it's really quiet. If you have your video clip playing, you'll see all of the audio bars go up and down as each of your audio tracks are receiving audio information and you'll be able to see what the sound levels are for those audio clips, making sure that they're not going above zero because once it hits zero, then it would start to lose the audio information as it reaches beyond the maximum audio volume. And for editing your audio tracks, you can open up the mixer which uh, the button for is in the top right hand corner and you'll be able to see all of your audio tracks and then the master audio track which is including all of your audio tracks fused together into one final output track. Two things I really want to point out for the Fairlight tab is that you can actually record audio straight from within this page uh, by adding in a input device, generally a microphone, a headset, something like that. And then once you have that selected, you can queue up a track for recording by pressing the R down here. And then you click the record button and your timeline in order to start recording to that track and any other tracks that are currently queued up for recording, which will have this R symbol turn red. In addition to that, you can apply audio effects to an entire audio track rather than a specific clip on that track by in the mixer, you, you click the plus button next to effects. You go to Fairlight effects and you can choose an effect such as noise reduction if you want to adjust the audio for the entire track. So by doing that and then going to auto speech mode, 
you could have Resolve filter out a lot of background noise by automatically detecting what's speech and what's not and filtering out the areas that don't align with the speech. And so in auto speech mode, Resolve will automatically try to figure out what's speech and what's not on the audio track and remove any of the remaining background noise. So finally, when you're done editing your video, you have the deliver tab. So there's a bunch of settings you can play around with, but in most cases you're probably going to be using a preset like YouTube. So if you click on that, you can set a file name, choose a location on your computer to save it to, choose your format, QuickTime.Move and MP4 both work really well. And if you are signed into your YouTube account within DaVinci Resolve, which you can set up by going to the DaVinci Resolve menu in the top left and then do preferences and internet accounts, you can lock into YouTube or Vimeo there, then you can have a video immediately upload to YouTube once your video is done exporting. So you just need to add it to the render queue, choose a location on your computer, select the job or jobs that you want to render all at once, and then hit the start render button. So hopefully this video has given you guys a really good quick overview of what you can do within DaVinci Resolve. Obviously there is a lot more to learn about the program. So that's going to be it for this video. I've been Chris. Once again, if you want to learn more about DaVinci Resolve, I have a lot of videos on my channel about it. So I'll see you guys in my future content.